My name's Peter Westervelt. I'm the section head for bone marrow transplant and leukemia and a professor of medicine at WashU. My first rotation was on BMT. Dr. DePerzio was the attending. Uh, back then, uh, the program was a lot smaller than it is now. Uh, there were three attendings. Um, they were all crammed into uh, this little tiny clinic space about the size of your living room. Well, everybody got to know each other real well. The transplant program had not been uh, as developed. So the challenges initially were to find faculty to, you know, to grow the program. I, I could see the potential because of the people that were here, uh, the, yeah, the dedication and enthusiasm of the institution. The only thing that was lacking was getting all the faculty here and, and growing the program, which really, um, once it started, it was sort of self-perpetuating. Um, our program is what it is today because of John DePerzio, pure and simple. He just has this huge vision of the program. And when you're working with someone who uh, is that passionate, you can't help but to kind of take on that same characteristic. So Dr. DePerzio, as a person, an everyday person, he is funny. I've been told that um, in the past he uh, dabbled in stand-up comedy at one point, so. There's a giant cardboard cutout of him that has been floating around here for quite some time. And let me just say, we have had uh, a lot of enjoyment with that cardboard cutout. <laughs> that's it, that's the cardboard cutout. You know, we, we fell short of drawing on a mustache, but you know, we kind of felt like we wanted to do that too, but we felt like that would kind of be crossing the line. You have to try and um, stay loose. He genuinely cares and has a, a very elevated passion for doing what's right for his patients, but also doing what's right for his people. Well, there's a huge amount of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. We have an army of uh, clinical research associates, the aides, the techs, housekeeping, search team, blood bank, on and on and on. It's just a humming place all the time, and everybody's sort of invested in your, in your um, uh, positive outcome. My role here at Simon Cancer Center is to, um, I oversee all of our uh, inpatient oncology units. I'm actually a clinical supervisor. We are kind of the worker bees behind the scenes. If a patient never knows that, they're, that they even have a financial coordinator or a transplant financial coordinator, I know that I've done the best possible job. Well, the, the dynamic of the, of the entire team is one of uh, people really going the extra mile when no one's looking. In the old days, the patients would always brag about their doctors. But these days, the patients would whisper in my ear, my nurse is the greatest nurse. It's the little things and the, and the people that you wouldn't think would be contributing in such a massive way. There are so many different aspects and team members that support the BMT program. And by working together, we can produce this masterpiece for our patients. We've taken care of a lot of patients and um, who have done well. That's the greatest thing in the world. It is a, an amazing feeling to know that, um, that you are helping these patients uh, in the most difficult time in their lives. People remember their nurses, okay? Because it's those, those special moments that we share together and the nurses help them through those moments and, and, and make them better and again, um, almost become a part of that family. I want patients to focus on their physical healing. And if I can take one stress off of them, their financial stress, then I know I've done my job. You know, I just think oncology patients in general are just a different caliber and they're, they're beautiful people. There's a patient, you know, that, that we have, and uh, I do the same thing for this patient that I've done for, for hundreds of patients. And uh, I'm at work one day, and uh, I get a call from the front desk saying that you, you have a delivery out here. And I open it up, and it's from a patient, and uh, she's uh, just telling me how much it meant to her 
to have me working as hard as I was for her. You forget, you know, because you do it so much. And, uh, and you mean what you do and you just, you just forget that, uh, that you're a part of their, their story. That's what this job's about, is, is caring for people and doing those little things and, and helping them along their journey. My name is Ron Miller and my diagnosis was AML. Uh, my name is Thomas Bosgarden. I was diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia. I'm Amanda Pope and I was diagnosed with AML. My first experience here um, was, I gotta say, a lot different than the places I'd been in the past. It was totally organized. Um, I met, uh, I think they still call them navigators uh, when I first came here. There was just a level of care and professionalism here that I'd never really experienced before. I, I can't overemphasize how important that is to the to kind of the, 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 the psychological part of all this. The most important thing is patient care and that doesn't just mean good outcomes in the end, that means all the way through you're caring for the whole person you're caring for their body you're caring for their mind and you're caring for you know their heart something that really stood out to me was when i couldn't make it to my mba graduation they brought the graduation to me and i wore my cap and gown and my hood and i walked the halls of uh, of the bone marrow transplant floor while they hummed the graduation song it just made that day so special and it's something that I will always cherish forever. Well, the, the bone marrow transplant patient celebration um, is probably the most gratifying thing that we do. This year's celebration is even more remarkably special because not only is it our 25th anniversary of the patient celebration, it's also our very own Dr. DiPerzio's 25th year with the program. I thought that initially, if we could get some of the patients to come back for even a small celebration, it would invigorate everyone. When the patients came back, they got an incredible charge out of it. My favorite part is to scan the crowd and to see how many individuals are just remarkable in the audience because they're living a normal, healthy, happy life. I remember when I was in the hospital, I would look at the photos of the celebrations on the wall and the growing number of patients, and I was just so inspired, I couldn't wait to go one day. It's kind of like one giant support group is the way I see it. I mean, if, if they can see someone like me or other people that are you know, five, six, seven years out, and that, that's, that's a, big, a big thing to them. It truly speaks to the dedication and the commitment of the doctors and the heart of the program. It is, I think, just as much therapy for us as it is for the patients. It's important to, like I said, bring all the moving parts, all the staff together. To link back, right? To, to find out, hey, I took care of you on the floor. You are doing great, you know? And it's, it's, a, it's almost a reunion. To meet people that I, that don't know I exist really, but that I've worked so hard for on the back end. Most of them look completely normal. They're sitting there having dinner, they're with their family, they're having a good time. And you know, you realize that uh, some of them, you know, wouldn't have been here unless we had intervened. And so that is pretty powerful for me. If I could give a personal message to every patient, it would be, thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for putting your trust in us and for really entrusting your lives to us. Thank you for, um, for coming to us, for, for letting us be part of your life. You are um, the reason we do what we do. So thank you and good luck to you. This is what I'd like to say to all my patients. I'm sorry for being late today. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>